So guys, let's have a look at this old timer. Um, this is the carving knife, the 24 OT. Yeah. Now I know in the states I've seen a few when they're saying they're about thirty dollars. Now I bought this in UK. Uh, it cost me thirty four pound. So it's quite a bit more, but obviously it's got to be shipped or whatever. I, I mean I know it's probably made in China by shred, but still. It, the in whatever taxes they charge in UK, I might have paid a little bit more than I could have, but that's how it is. Um, first impressions on it, it was quite a nice little knife. It's well, it's all well finished. You know, it's, there's nothing sticking out there that's going to bite you. You know what I mean? And because if it as a carving knife, you've got to put some grip in it. If you know what I'm saying, you're not putting pressure on like this, but you've got to have a good grip on it. Now I'll just give you my first impressions and show you the, uh, the the tools that are on it. These are sort of flat bladed in, uh, tools. There's a little V tool there. Now I will say what I do like about that as a V tool rather than if it was that way, because when you're using a V tool that way, you're not using your thumb, right? And when you're carving, back, let me show you what I mean. I'll set this piece of wood here. If I'm using a V tool like this, for instance, yeah, I'm pushing forward on it, yeah. Okay, this is sharp now. This V tool, this is very sharp actually. I sharpened it all up, so it, I don't need much pressure on it, yeah, to actually take a V off it. But I also haven't got a, a lot of control. Say if I'm doing a cross grain which it's hard to do a cross grain because usually when you're carving you put using your thumb as a lever, I'll show you what I mean whereas this I can put my thumb across it and use that, so I like that now this is straight out of the box you saw how sharp, well you can see how sharp this is yeah let me see, you nearly got myself then <laughs> not looking, looking at the screen and not the thing <coughs> excuse me see how sharp that is whereas this is straight out of box it's not bad for sharpness on summit blades but you've got that sort of my force then is coming from from here and I'm not pushing that way which is that's a lot safer so I do like that but that's the V tool and I say straight out of box as well as V tool there's a straight blade which is sort of that sort of thing now what I will say about that first thing I don't like about that is if you can see it's sharpened you've got that oh you've got that bevel there yeah there's no bevel on that that's just like a scan the way up from both sides straight up whereas that it's got a bevel on it yeah so that means say I've got this piece of wood I can put that in quite deep, yeah, and take another chunk. And you see how thin that, you see how thin that bite is. And I can come in from there and take a nice chunk out, yeah. What I've noticed with this is you need a lot more pressure to put that in any sort of distance. Look, that's not biting in, is it? And that's because of that bevel. So I might have to sharpen that out. I might have to grind that out. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does it, it does job, but you need a lot more effort. And I have actually put strop over that slightly, not a lot, but I did uh, get a quick strop. But I'll show you again with this. You know what I mean? That's a hundred times better. Well, a hundred, maybe not, but... you got to do a lot more work to get cut, you know. So, <coughs> that I don't like. Now, one thing I did notice when I had this on strop, because when you, when, you, when you strop, say, this knife, you've got a good surface area, yeah? And there's some drag on that, yeah? So, one thing I did notice when I was stropping that is that 
sometimes wanted to fold up. Now obviously if my finger's there and I fold it up, I don't think it'll it's not likely to click in. It won't click in, so it's not like it's going to go back on spring and click in into my finger. But it's something I have to be careful with if I'm stropping it. Like that. That's just gone, see? It wants it wants to do that. Because when you're stropping, you're stropping the entire surface of that of that grind. And so that I don't like that grind. I'm going to try and bring it further back. I mean, I can't go too far because you've got your nail clip, uh, your nail thing to pull it out, you know. But that I'm not sure about. That's not fantastic. As is. I'm not saying it won't be, but as is, I don't like it. And also on this, you've got a straight chisel. But again, I think if they'd have put that straight chisel, do it using the same method. Mind you, maybe not. It might not have worked as well. But because you're pushing like this, again, that's not very sharp either. It feels sharp, but it's not. But you're pushing. You know what I'm saying. You're always pushing. So therefore, you you got less control because you're pushing with this hand. And if you something splits off, you're going. Pachung. So, if I don't know whether they could have done that, so that it worked like that, um, like the V. And on this side, we've got all curved blades, which we've got a straight gouge. Again, pushing. Don't worry, you can use it, and that's actually not bad for sharpness. That's quite good for sharpness. But again, they've all got paint on back, so I mean, there's that all wants polishing off. But there is a little, I don't know whether you can see in that, but you can see on edge, there's like a little bit of a burr, it just wants knocking back and then clean, cleaning up for it, paint off it. But that's quite sharp. Again, another little sc a scoop. How do I get to that? Like that. A little scoop on the side. I like that. I really do like that because you've got that control. And again, that's not bad for sharpness. I mean, for whatever, I mean, you can do the same sort of job as as that gouge not it's quite it's a bit wider obviously but for spoons and stuff like that or for whatever cutting out some I mean that's quite good that's quite sharp it's cutting in both directions you know but I'd, I like that I just like that I think that's a really good idea say if they could have done uh, all of them like that I think it might have been better that's my opinion somebody might tell me a good reason why not and then you've got like that, which again, spoon or a ball gouge, which is quite good. But you can, I don't know whether you can see it light on edge, but there's a bit of a a burr or a flat spot. So it, it could do a sharpen. But again, it does cut, you know, just wants a bit of a, a bit of love. I've said, I've never, that sharpest, most of the blades there are pretty sharp. And as a, as a new knife, straight from shop out at box that's probably the sharpest knife I've had as in for carving I mean I've had sharper like normal pocket knives but as a carving knife straight out at factory because you can see where grind is it's not polished at all but it's sharp you know what I mean but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give all these a tickle on the old uh, leather and I might I've put them on, I've got a a stone I might just put them on a stone first a very fine fine stone and I'll get some emery paper or wet and dry take that paint off at back edges because that makes a difference as well and uh, I'll see what it does and I'll carve something with it and we'll see how it performs but as far as uh, you know first impressions is pretty good uh, I did watch another review when a guy was talking about if it locked. I think a lock if it locked it'd be a lot better. In some respect the worst one's gonna be that, just for stropping. Uh they're not a problem because you push you I'm you push you're not pushing you know, I'm not pushing it short, you know what I'm saying? I'm pushing with that thumb. This hand's just holding it. So I won't be I won't be worried about that. But locks would be good. And that's what I think of it so far. You know when you say, if you use anything, put it back. Somebody didn't, did they? 
suppose I'll have to put it back. I'll just show you this, see that? Oh, it's got a, it's not straight where I've been grinding it on this stone. See that, it's a dipping stone. I'm just putting it on belt grinder to flatten it. it needs to be flat. Something to watch out for. It's been warm with doing uh, gouges. You'll wear it in one place. Keep your stones flat. That's better. There's no discernible dip now. Because that's where it were. It was gouged out. That'll make it a lot easier. So, I'm not going to do it with stone. It's going to take a lot more filing. Uh, a lot more than just stone, so I'm probably going to have to file that. Now, I will say, I'll show you. Uh, it's shaving sharp. I don't know whether you can see that, but it is shaving sharp. But, like I say, that bevel, just, I mean, this is only pine, look, this is just pine, but that bevel stops you from getting a, a deep cut. It's a little bit better. I mean, it, but you want to be able to get a deep cut when you're doing that, so that'll have, I'll probably have to file that. That's only biggest that's biggest negative I, f I could find about it really so far i haven't carved anything with it i've got to try and shop i've got to sharpen well not sharpen but polish these and as i say get that inside edge done oh, i'm going to do that i'm not going to wait you watch that and then when i've done that that actually is a little is also a little bit of a pain to uh it might go yeah it's not bad. I thought it might be a bit difficult because it's shape, you know, because you've got to do this sort of action to get it on. But it'll just take a bit more time than doing a normal one that's straight. But I'm not going to complain about that because what I like about that is that you've got that control. I'd like, I'd, I'd like some more tools that are made like that in that direction rather than pushing front back. So, but yes. I will get these sharpened and then I will do the second part of this review.